Peace be upon you, beautiful children. And today's story is One Springy Day. Ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, said the parkkeeper counted. One hundred, coming already or not. Percy's animal friends were ready, all except one. Oh dear, said the fox, where shall I hide? I can see you, hedgehog, Percy called. Found you, the fox stood by the door to Percy's workshop. Oh dear, Percy said not to go in here, but, but, Percy called again. He was getting closer. Three rabbits in my wheelbarrow. Found you. This was too much for the fox. He put his paws over his ears and slipped through the workshop doorway. There must be somewhere to hide in here, he muttered. He stopped by some tall shelves and looked up. I wonder... The fox began to climb, the shelves like a ladder. It was very, very tricky, and it became trickier still when he got his foot tangled up in an old spring. He shook his leg, but the spring stayed put. He shook his leg harder and harder. The shelves began to go to sway. Get off, the fox moaned. Percy is coming. I need to... Oh! Crash! The shelves tipped forward and emptied everything on them, including the fox, onto the floor. The fox wasn't hurt, but something wasn't right. He felt sticky, very, very sticky. What was that noise? said a voice outside. Oh no, it's Percy. The fox jumped to his feet and bundled himself into a nearby cupboard, just in time. somebody in here? Percy walked into the workshop, followed by all the other animals. He looked at the fallen shelves. Oh my goodness, what a mess. Everything's covered in my very sticky glue. Look, said the hedgehog. He pointed to a line of footprints across the floor, leading to the cupboard, where Percy kept things he needed for his work. Footprints.
Slowly, Percy opened the cupboard door. There was no sign of the fox. Fox? Percy called softly. Are you in there? There was a pause. <clears throat> no, said the fox. The animals giggled together. Then who can it be? said Percy. Don't know, said the fox. It's definitely not me. Percy chuckled. Come on, out you come. To everyone's amazement, not only did the fox step out of the cupboard, but so did everything else, all at once, all stuck together. Whoa, said Percy. The animals began to laugh. They laughed and laughed. Only the fox didn't think it was funny, with one foot st still stuck in the troublesome spring and the other in a paint pot. He ran from the workshop. Clomp, boing, clomp, boing, clomp, boing. Fox, called Percy, come back. The animals looked at each other. Oh dear said Percy. I think he's upset. Outside the fox was nowhere to be seen. We need to search party, said the owl. No need for that. Look there, said a squirrel. It's a trail of clues left by the fox. Well done, said Percy. Listen, said one of the rabbits. Everyone stood quite still. Clomp, boing, clomp, boing, clomp, boing. Aha, said Percy. We'll soon find him, and remember, when we do, no laughing. With the rabbits racing ahead, Percy and his friends followed the trail, collecting up all the clues in Percy's wheelbarrow. Phew, I need a breather, said Percy sat down on the roots of an ancient hollow tree. Two rabbits run up to him. Their trail has run out. We can't find any more clues. That's a nuisance, said Percy. It'll be harder to find the fox now. He could be boing... Percy stopped. The boingy sound seemed to come from inside the tree. Percy smiled and signalled for everyone to keep quiet. Hello, folks, he said. 
There was no reply. Percy went on. Would you like to come out now? Can't, said the fox. Stuck. Everyone tried very hard not to laugh. Let's give you a hand then, said Percy. He reached into the hollow tree and found not the fox, but the handle of a bucket. He gave a tug. Goodness, you really are stuck, right? Come on, everyone. This calls for some teamwork. Percy and the animals tied ropes and strings to the bucket handle and the other bits and pieces that were stuck to the fox's fur. They tugged and they pulled again and again, but still the stuck fox stayed stuck. The badger whispered to Percy, I think it's his bottom. His bottom? said Percy. What's the matter with his bottom? It's stuck to the tree, said the badger. The badger picked up a mop from Percy's wheelbarrow and went to the other side of the tree. I've got an idea, he said. When I say go, give it one more little heave. The badger gently pushed the mop through a split in the tree trunk. What's that? said a muffled voice. Who's poking my... Take the strain, called Percy. Ready, Badger? Go, shouted the Badger. Well, that's the end of the story. Oh dear. Percy and the animals gave a mighty heave and the badger pushed the mop as hard as he could with a boing and a howl. The fox came free. Fox flying out of a hollow tree. Percy called, found you. Well, that's the today's end of today's story. Until next time.
Bump! The fox landed in a heap in front of Percy's. He tried to get up, wobbled and sat down again. Oh, words! Oh, my words! said Percy. Look at your fur! You need a nice warm soapy bath. The fox didn't look happy and afterwards Percy went on. We'll all have tea. I've got a treacle tart we can share. That was a lovely story, wasn't it? Cool. Well, sorry for the fox. Not for me, thanks, said the fox. I've had enough sticky stuff for one day. Percy chuckled. Never mind, he said. Tomorrow will be another fine spring day. Please, said the fox, don't mention the spring. Springs. Well, that was a good story, wasn't it? Did you enjoy it? Well, until next time, don't forget to say your prayers and thank God for everything you have. And God bless you, my darlings. <laughs>